we are continuing to monitor this, but we just have on the phone with us right now, so if you will indulge us here, uh, Ralph Nader. Um, you, know, you might be saying, why Ralph Nader and erupting at Donald Trump's ones? I think it's very I interesting to put this in perspective because this is happening in Florida, less than 24 hours after Hillary Clinton had Al Gore talking in Florida. Of course, Al Gore lost the 2000 race, uh, largely, he says, because of what happened in Florida, saying that every vote counts. And without putting the words together, saying Ralph Nader is what did him in in Florida. Ralph Nader, as a, a third party candidate back then in 2000, uh, scored close to 100,000 votes in the Sunshine State. And that, the argument goes, robbed Al Gore of winning that state and ultimately the presidency. Ralph Nader with us right now. Um, Ralph, first off, what did you think of that? What, uh, what, what Al Gore was claiming, what Hillary Clinton was saying about every vote count? counting and that I guess by summation they were saying that votes for you back 16 years ago torpedoed Democrats. You say what? You're smarter than that, Neil. Uh, obviously every vote counts, but uh, what Al Gore didn't say is that over 300,000 registered Democrats in Florida voted for George W. Bush and not for Al Gore. Uh, thousands of people in Florida were misidentified by Jeb Bush's Secretary of State in Tallahassee as ex-felons and prevented from voting. The shenanigans with the butterfly ballot, where people ended up voting for Buchanan when they wanted to vote uh, for, uh, for Al Gore. So let's not scapegoat. You know better than that. You've interviewed a lot of people well, who just, engage I'm in just, scapegoating. You know, that's what they're saying. I wanted to hear your response. I also yeah. want to get your sense of what the Hillary campaign seems to be saying about these other outside party candidates, that they're a wasted vote. What do you say when you hear that? They're not a waste of vote at all. They get things underway that the two parties are ignoring, taking off the table. The Liberty Party in 1840 went out against slavery. Uh, the women's right to vote parties in the mid-19th century, the farmer labor uh, par parties. They never won a national election, but they pushed the envelope of these justice pathways onto the table of one or two of the major parties. It's dissent. Dissent is the mother of assent in American history. If you don't respect it, if you try to stifle it, degrade it, uh, call it spoiler, you're acting in an authoritarian manner. We all have an equal right to run for election under the Constitution, to get votes from one another. We're either spoilers of one another or none of us are spoilers, a politically bigoted term directed to third-party candidates who are trying to raise a broader agenda and give more choice to the American people. And you think about it, Ralph, too, I mean, um, if, if Al Gore had such a tough time bearing an improving economy backed by a popular president, um, he has to take some responsibility for that and not start blaming others. But, but as you look and listen to Donald Trump, before we got to you, uh, he's got an uphill battle in Florida. Right now he trails in a lot of the polls, although he had trailed more. He had been in the lead. These polls seem very volatile, even more so than in 2000. What do you think is going on? Well, I, I think he's uh, destroying himself and the party as a candidate. He, the party's turning into a Trump dump, and a lot of Republicans are bailing out on him, and that's going to reduce his vote turnout. When you have Republican candidates in states like Arizona and elsewhere bailing out on him, that's going to reduce the vote for his candidacy. He's like the chief circus barger, barker. It's just uh, it's degrading to the to the country. He he prevaricates, he exaggerates, he makes wild statements. The press corrects them. On the next round, he makes the same wild statements. Uh, he has no experience at all. I mean, if you want an electrician and a plumber, you, you'd want someone who who knows what he's talking about or what she's talking about. He doesn't know anything about government and brags about it. Well, you had no government experience when you were running, and yet you you got a lot of votes. Well, but I knew a lot about government. I sued government. I worked in I know, the Department you had of no Labor. Role in, 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 in a prominent elected office. So I'm it, saying, it, by that definition, a lot of people should never even attempt running. No, uh, I, I like citizen candidates. I like candidates from all parts. But he brags about his ignorance. So he doesn't know this. He doesn't know that. He's made incredible blunders. A uh, uh, factual but information. But he's still oddly competitive with Hillary Clinton for all those problems, for all these embarrassing things yeah. that come out. What do you make of that? Because. Uh, 
uh, she is his best asset, and he is her best asset. They, there are people in this country who intensely dislike Hillary Clinton or who intensely dislike Donald Trump. They have the highest unfavorability ratings in American electoral history. They're in the 60, 65, 68 percent of the people in this country think that Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton are dishonest. And so, I mean, you know, this is where we're at. Don't the American people deserve better? I well, mean, who are you Trump, voting for? Uh, Neil, Trump scares the business community. Hillary scares the generals. That's where we're at. Well, who do you like? I guess it would be, or who do you dislike less? Well, there are other. There's the Libertarian Party, Gary Jans, Johnson's right. Green Party, uh, J Dr. Jill Stein. I've always said that the Green Party platform is the best one for America. So Going you're, for back Dr. To one, you're for Dr. Stein. I don't endorse anyone, but I say good things about politicians mm -hmm. when they deserve it. And that's what's in my new book, Breaking Through Power. That's, it's easier than we think. That's the subtitle. We've got to reassert ourselves as citizens, Neil. Otherwise, we're looking at a, at a circus that can turn into a tragedy for us in Washington, D.C. Well, let, well let's see, get a sense of what's happening now. One of the things Donald Trump said in the first debate, uh, and I know that went off the rails, the second debate, many argue went off the rails, but they're considered one and one now in these debates. I don't know if you feel it. But one of the things he mentioned was this market, this economy is on a precipice that it's supported by unrealistically low 0% interest rates. That can't be sustained. We're only a slight uptick from everything coming down. I'm paraphrasing. But what do you make of his argument that this house of cards is about to fall? Well, spoken as a true failed gambling czar and a corporate welfare king. He should know what he's talking about when he talks about instability and speculation. Well, by the yeah. way, you, now wait a minute. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. People have taken the bankruptcy code and used it to their advantage. He would not be the first guy to do that or the first company, I believe. Many have, right? Yeah, but he does it as a business practice, anywhere from four to six, and he jumps ship with uh, what's gold is left and strands his workers, creditors, small business but what's suppliers. More offensive but back, to you. Back no, no, to your no, point. Ralph, you raise an important point. But what is more offensive to you? He argues what should be more offensive, in talking about his bankruptcies, is a couple, in the case of Bill and Hillary Clinton, have gotten very rich based on public office. And that's even more offensive. Well, as someone who's demanded the release of her transcripts beside, beside, uh, you know, before closed-door banking conventions and other business conventions, I, I don't disagree with you. She, they were paying her $5,000 a minute, a minute, and she required closed-door, no press, no Neil Cavuto, uh, and a transcript only in her possession. So that WikiLeaks has released some of them, and you can see how she talks with a forked tongue. She says one thing, sweet talking business officials and closed door conventions, and then she, on the husting, she tries to mimic Bernie Sanders. So That's let me why ask you about that. Now, it, it comes down to trust, and like you say, there are a lot of people who, despite the third party candidates and the Green Party candidate that you seem intrigued by, that, that say it's going to be one of those two. It's going to be either Trump or Hillary. And, and, uh, I guess what I'm asking you is, who would you trust more in, in, in the White House? Well, I, you mean between the two? Between those two. Oh, what, why should we be forced to take a choice? I understand, but that be, let's say we go on the polls right now that they've got the best shot. You talk, you're talking about someone who believes in a vote of conscience, a dissenting vote, so they can write in a vote, vote for a third party. Uh, or decide not to vote at all if they don't have the choice but it was that they those like. Two, and Ralph Nader, who calls it like he sees it and offends both parties, doesn't care. And you had a choice between just those two, and you had a chance to gauge how each would do in the White House. Who do you think would do a better job? I think uh, Hillary Clinton certainly knows the ropes. She's not going to be on the job training. Whether she has good judgment or experience is another thing. He doesn't know the ropes. He's going to blow steam hour by hour, and he's going to so alienate the Republicans in Congress uh, and put them in a conflict of interest for their own skin and survival in 2018 elections that I think he could be the fastest impeached president in American history. Because when it comes to politicians who it's either their skin or the, the president's skin, they'll take their skin any day. You know, a lot of Republicans have been breaking with Donald Trump, um, and there's this issue. I think it was Mike Huckabee who raised the possibility. Forget them worrying about Donald Trump losing. They're worried about him winning. That he's, he's going to have much more trouble should he win the presidency with Republicans than he is with Democrats. What did you think of that? 
Well, I think so, because he, he embarrasses his own party. I mean, when was the last time, Neil, you heard someone attack his own party leaders again and again? Uh, he's attacking Paul Ryan. He, he's attacking McCain. And, uh, you know, you, you don't get away with that. They, these are bitter feelings, and uh, these politicians want to survive, and they will have a powerful conflict of interest against Trump himself. That's why I think uh, he, he's... Uh, he's He's behaving in a way where you begin to think whether he even wants to be president. He just wants his brand name. He wants to go to the Trump Hotel near the White House, have a big extravaganza. Uh, he's not a serious candidate. If he was, he wouldn't behave the way he is. Going after Miss Universe at 3 a.m. in the morning, saying she's too obese. I mean, this is unstable uh, psychological per, uh, performance by him. 